In this video, we will go over lead code question number 35, search insert position. Given a sorted array of distinct integers called nums and a target value, we have to return the index of the target in the array. If it doesn't exist, then we'll have to return the index that it would be at if it were inserted in order. Now, there's one other major restriction. Our algorithm must run in O of log n time. That makes things difficult because now we can't just traverse the array one by one until we find the target. If the length of the array is n, then in the worst case, we'd have to look at n elements. So the algorithm runs in O of n time. Instead, we can take advantage of the fact that the array is sorted and use binary search. Here's a quick overview if you're unfamiliar. In binary search, we maintain two endpoints that start at the beginning and the end of the array. At each step, we calculate the midpoint of the two endpoints and compare the target with the midpoint element. Here, three things can happen. If the midpoint element is equal to the target, then we're done and we can just return the midpoint index. If the midpoint element is less than the target, then since the array is sorted, we know that the target has to be to the right of the midpoint. So we'll update the left bound to be one element past the midpoint. Lastly, if the midpoint element is greater than the target, then by the same logic, we know that the target has to be to the left of the midpoint. So we'll update the right bound to be one element before the midpoint. Then we'll keep repeating this until we either find the target or if the target doesn't exist in the array, then the two bounds will converge and eventually pass each other, meaning that the target was not found. With each iteration, we eliminate around half of the array. So now the question is, how many iterations does it take to converge on the target? Well, another way to think of it is, how many times do we need to divide n by 2 until we reach 1? Let's say k is the number of times we need to divide n by 2 to reach 1. Then the equation is n over 2 to the k power equals 1, and we need to solve for k. Let's move 2 to the k power over to the right side, and we can isolate k by using logarithms, meaning that we can rearrange this to be log of n with a base of 2 equals k. So now we know that it takes log base 2 of n steps to complete the algorithm. But in big O analysis, we drop the base, so we say that this algorithm runs in O of log n time. Now let's look at the code and see how we can do this in Python. Let's say this is the nums array and our target is 7. First, we'll establish the left and right endpoints, so L will equal 0 and R will be the length of the array minus 1, so 5. Then we'll enter the loop which will continue running until the left and right endpoints converge on a single number. This condition here needs to be less than or equal to, not just less than, because all we know is that the target is somewhere between those two endpoints, including the endpoints themselves. So if they're equal to each other, we still need to do one last check to see if the element at that index is the target. So first, we'll calculate the midpoint by taking the average of the endpoints and rounding down to get a whole number. So 0 plus 5 is 5, divided by 2 is 2.5, then rounded down is 2, so mid equals 2. Then we'll compare the element at index 2 to the target and figure out which one of the three scenarios we're in. It's either less than the target, greater than the target, or if neither of those are true, then it must be equal to the target. So the element at index 2 is 4, which is less than 7, so we know that the target has to be to the right of the midpoint. So we'll update L to be mid plus 1, so 3 since we know that the target is not at the midpoint and it must be to the right of it. Then we'll loop again. 3 plus 5 is 8, divided by 2 is 4, so mid is 4. The element at index 4 is 7, and we see that we found the target. That means we enter the else block and just return 4, the index of 7, and we're done. But what happens if the element doesn't exist in the array? Let's try this again, but this time we'll make the target 3. We'll start the same way by establishing the left and right bounds and calculating the mid index, which is 2. Then we compare 4 with the target, and we see that 4 is greater than 3. So we'll enter this elif block and update r to be mid minus 1, so it's 1. Next, the new midpoint is 0 plus 1 divided by 2, which is 1 half, then rounded down is 0. The element at index 0 is 1, which is less than 3, so we'll update l to be 0 plus 1, so 1. Now notice that L is the same index as R, but we still need to loop one more time because we haven't checked the element at index 1 yet, which is 2. 2 is less than 3, so we'll update L again, but now L becomes 1 plus 1, which is 2. Now when we check the loop condition, 2 is greater than 1, so we know that we've checked everything and 3 doesn't exist in the array. So now the question is, 
at which index would 3 be at if it were inserted in sorted order? You can see that the answer is just to return the left index, L, but let me explain why. So if we're at this point where the left index is greater than the right index, one of two things had to have happened. The first possibility is that they converged on a single number, and that number happened to be less than the target, so the left pointer got moved up. This is what happened in the example that we were just doing. The second possibility is that they converged on a single number, and that number happened to be greater than the target, so the right pointer got moved down. Either way, you can see that the left and right pointers end up in the same position, where the target, 3, should be inserted between the left and right pointers. So which index do we insert 3 into? Well, going back to our example, if we inserted 3 at the right index so that it becomes the element at index 1, that's actually one space behind the correct spot. So instead, we insert it at the left index at index 2. And now we see that the 3 is in the correct spot. So that's why here, if the element is not found, we can just return the left index, L, and we're done.